Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Anne Bailey, and I teach English here at the wonderful Presidential School in Tashkent. And I'd like to welcome you today to our little session. And the subject is, as you see here, um, working towards IELTS. So developing speaking skills in upper secondary. So here, that would be years 9, 10, and 11. Of course, in year 11, you are looking at taking your IELTS examination, but you can do a lot in the two years before that as well to prepare so that you're ready, particularly with speaking. Okay? So, this is the question that many uh, upper secondary students ask me. How do I get a great score in the IELTS exam? So let's just look at these points. Number one, try to talk as much as you can. Of course, in English, yes. Number two, as fluently as possible. So try not to pause and stumble and um, have breakdowns in communication. Try and make your language smooth and fluid. Okay. Relax. I know that's hard to do in an exam. But in general, every day in your lessons, don't be frightened to speak English. Just try your best, even if you make mistakes. It doesn't matter. Just try. Okay? Be confident. Enjoy it. Okay? Uh, develop your answers. So if somebody asks you a question, don't just answer with yes, no, and then a big pause. Try and think of other things to add, more details to add to your response. If you don't understand, either myself in my class, if my students don't understand, they would say something like, I'm sorry, could you repeat that please? Or um, you can do that in the exam as well actually. You don't have to just sit and worry that you didn't understand. You can ask for clarification. Okay, and express your opinions. Say, I think this is the answer because, and give a reason for your answer. Okay, so one more thing. People ask, how should I practice? Now this is relevant all through your upper secondary years 9, 10 and 11. You can be indirectly preparing for the IELTS exam by making an effort to try and speak English every day and about as many different subjects as you want to or as you can. So that's what today is about. I'm going to show you a few activities that um, will as all speaking English will help you in the exam, but this, these activities are activity types which will help students like yourself or the colleagues who are watching as well have a look at these and think how you can use them in the classroom. Not just in the last six months before the IELTS examination, but also in years 9, 10 and 11 throughout. Okay. Now, this section is for the teachers because it's just a summary of how to conduct uh, a successful lesson where the students are expressing themselves orally, speaking, okay? So, open-ended answers. So, the questions that the students are asked can have a shorter answer or can have a longer, more detailed answer. And this depends largely on the ability of the student. So, in a sense, it is differentiation, because you will accept um, some more simplistic answer and a shorter answer from someone who is not so confident. But you will expect a little bit more depth from somebody who is very competent. So the answers are open-ended. And they are not right or wrong, generally. They are generally opinions and rationales. Okay? Now, grouping. Um, 
we don't recommend the teacher at the front and the students all in desks uh, in rows. Okay, so when we're doing a speaking lesson with the students, it is best to have them sitting in groups or in twos so that they are communicating with each other within their groups or their pairs. They can be sitting maybe three or four students around a desk, one desk, so that they can communicate easily, or they can sit preferably opposite each other with one desk between them so that they can maintain eye contact and look at each other while they communicate. Um, interaction patterns. So it's not all about the teacher talking to the students and the students talking to the teacher. It's much more about students talking to students. Students in pairs, students in groups, or students to the whole class but it's not so much about student-teacher interaction. Okay. In fact, teacher talking time, which you will know about, is minimal in this kind of lesson. Much more focus is on the student talking time, and they are interacting with each other. So the role of the teacher changes. The teacher becomes the facilitator of the activity. The role of instructor is put aside and the teacher facilitates. What does that mean? That means she, she or he sets it up, sets up the activity and then just monitors, walks around the room constantly, eavesdropping unobtrusively on the conversations and giving help when asked or when uh, she or he feels there is a breakdown in communication. So the teacher's role is the facilitator. The students collaborate. They are learning through collaboration. Collaborative learning is occurring in this kind of lesson. We have a lot of peer cooperation and peer consultation. So the teacher is not the main focus again. And this is very important and difficult um, when you have a class like here where everyone speaks the one language. Only English is spoken at all times. Um, I have a rule in my English room, as soon as the students enter, the only language I must hear or can be used is English. Um, not only in giving answers, but also in talking, solving problems with each other, talking about how they will reach a consensus, all in English. Okay, so that's for the teachers. Okay, so in our lessons we have a starter activity, a main activity, and a plenary, which is the final, small, short activity. So, this is my acronym that I use for, for the starter. It should be SEAM. SEAM is the acronym. It should be short, engaging, energizing, and motivating. So, what do I mean? Energizing, they don't have to jump around and, and move physically, although they can in some activities. But it's just something to get them motivated and keen to start the lesson. Something interesting that grabs their attention. Okay. Now, for example, this, this I have found successful as a starter in speaking lessons. If you can see this picture, I hope it's clear. This is from the New York Times a few years ago, but it's a rather strange picture as you see. So, what I ask the students to do in their groups is to discuss what they think is happening in the picture. Okay, we don't take too long, but we give them the I give them the opportunity to discuss the situation and interpret it how they wish. There is no right or wrong answer. These um, question words are to guide them if they're stuck, you know, 
who is it? Who is this? Who is he? What's he doing there? When is it? Where is it? Etc. Actually, you could use this in your main section of the lesson as well in other ways and make it a longer activity. But this is a good opening activity because I find students are very interested in this picture because it is very bizarre, isn't it? So that was one. That's another picture that I use as a starter. Again, open to a lot of interpretation. So the students would discuss in their group reach a consensus or a decision about what's happening and then maybe one of them would report to the class or they could report to another group, they could move and join another group. Okay, If they're in pairs they could join with another pair and just exchange ideas. And then the last one, this is one that is extremely successful in um, figuring out what is happening and why and what you know where is it and everything it's a very good stimulus for speaking i find that they enjoy um, being given a challenge these i'm going to discuss a few of these challenges uh, challenge activities that i do with the students reminding them at the beginning that all speaking must be in english so for example TV news headlines, challenge one. Put the following TV news headlines into groups. They, you can choose the categories, but you must be able to explain them. So it's very open-ended. They can interpret how they wish and choose the categories they wish. This is an example, the introduction to challenge one they find common categories amongst these headlines. So we have alliteration, we have the sports topics. This one is a pun, a play on words, as in this one also. Humor, one or two might also be humorous. And then the next task in this exercise, look at the three photos and create a TV news headline for each photo. And you can extend it, they can give a bit of information as well if you wish to extend it. So this one photo, the headline, you're looking at news headlines. Uh, that one, the football, the boys like that one. And this one. Okay, so it, it's easy to find these, this kind of photo and to decide which one would appeal to your class. Running a restaurant is another example of using uh, statistic-based information to reach a consensus in their groups or in their pairs. You are the owners of a new restaurant and you need to make decisions about organizing your business, product sales, hours of operation and staffing. And this information will help you decide. So food preferred, food sales by time of day, and you have to decide which is the best six-hour block for your chef to work. And students enjoy this, but as I say, they cannot sit talking in Uzbek and then give you the answer. The whole process must be in English. Again, you want to specialize in two menu options only. And you have all the information needed to decide which menu you wish to choose. So that all this speaking is contributing to your knowledge of uh, English and eventually your IELTS examination. It will improve your confidence and your fluency. This is an extension maybe if you have um, more competent students, uh, you now want more customers and you have some money to spend, decide on three things you will do to make your restaurant more popular. Okay, so that's a bit of a more in-depth task for them to discuss together. And there it says tell another group, so when they finish they go and sit with another group and discuss, exchange ideas. Uh, another 
way of encouraging speaking is through poetry, even though the IELTS is not a literature-based exam, and um, in this school we don't study literature, but it's uh, good to expose students to poetry. Read the following poems and try to work out what they're about. Four minutes per poem. Re so they read them individually, they think about it, and then they discuss and report back their ideas. So this is a poem about the difficulties of English pronunciation and the problems it causes. This is a poem which is interesting because it's about two people playing tennis and the layout is backwards and forwards as if they are hitting the ball back and forth. So that's something interesting for the students. And this is just um, making fun of British English grammar. So you can choose whatever level of poem or whatever interests the students might have. Decide on a title, the two that don't have a title, and give a reason why you've chosen that title. Speaking for a minute, that's self-explanatory. This is similar, really, to the opening, the starter, only you're only allowed to speak for one minute about this picture or any picture that you find. That's one, and that's another example. Final challenge to speak is about travel entertainment. So again, it's a different type of problem to solve, but will encourage lots of speaking. And negotiation within the groups with their peers. He's traveling four hours for his job. He wants to watch a movie on the journey. Which movies can he watch and get as much of his journey time covered as possible? So it's a sort of numeracy-based problem that they have to solve together in their groups or in their pairs. This is the plenary, which is nice for the students to reflect upon their lesson and for the teacher to um, get some input about what they felt, about what they did. So they are going to tell their partner, tell one more person their thoughts about the lesson. So something that has made you think, something that you've felt about things as you went through the lesson, Something you did not find interesting, so you bin it. And something you put in your bag, so you take away or remember it and take it away from the lesson. So this is, this is examples of many speaking activities that can encourage uh, students as they go along to develop confidence and fluency in the English language. I hope that's been a, a bit useful today. Thank you.